All right, in today's video, we're gonna continue talking about doubly linked lists and get to two things that we didn't talk about last time. First, we're gonna talk about looping through the doubly linked list, which is pretty much the same as last time, but we'll include it now again for completeness. We'll talk about not only looping through forwards, but also looping through backwards, which is going to be just as easy to do it one way as the other way, which is one of the main benefits of a doubly linked list, but we'll see it both ways just, just for completeness. The next thing we'll talk about is how do you remove nodes from a doubly linked list, which is not going to be too much harder than last time. Remember last time with the singly linked list to remove a node, we had to sort of keep track of the previous node as we were looping through so that we can fix the links. Now we don't have to do that, but we do have to fix more links when we remove a node from the middle of the list because we have to fix not only the next links, but also the previous links. So let's go ahead and talk about how to do those two things. Okay, let's start off with talking about how to loop through a linked list forwards. This is going to be, I think, the same as it was last time. We're going to keep track of a node called current, which we're going to start off setting equal to the head. We're gonna keep going while this current node is not equal to null. Each time through the list, at the end, we're going to move on to the next item by setting current equal to current.next. Then inside of the loop, we do whatever it is with the node that we want to. So if we're looping through to search for something, we'll check if it's equal or whatever. But in this case, we're going to print out the node. So we'll go ahead and just print out current.data, which is pretty simple. Okay, so we can go ahead and have some code to test that, which I have in double list test.java, just to make sure things are going right. And this program just makes a doubly linked list of strings, adds the same strings that we did last time from our singly linked list, and then calls our new print method. So we can go ahead and compile double list.java and double list test.java, and then we'll go ahead and run double list test, and it prints out the names. So like I said, the method to loop through forwards is I think exactly the same as it was with the singly linked list. We don't have to use the previous or the tail just because they're there. In this case, we don't need them. All right, now though, we can turn our attention to looping through backwards. Remember, this was kind of a huge pain last time with the singly linked list. The solution I gave you relied on recursion where we essentially would recursively print the rest of the list first and only then print the node that we're currently on. And that kind of utilized the stack to build up the list in the stack frames. And then when we went back down the stack frames, we would print them out getting sort of the reverse order thing happening, which takes storage space and you can eventually overflow your stack. So that's not a great solution. It would be much better to do it with just a simple loop. And we can now do that. It's gonna be pretty much the exact same thing as we had before for printing it forwards, except now instead of starting at the head of the list, we're gonna start at the tail of the list. We're still gonna keep going while current doesn't equal null. Each time through, we're still gonna print out current.data, but now the other change that we're gonna to make to this is instead of setting current equal to current.next, we're going to set current equal to current.prev of course, which will make us go to the node before the one we're currently on instead of after. So let's go ahead and do that. Then we'll make the change to the test to call this new method instead for print backwards, I think I called it. Let's go ahead and compile and run it again just to make sure that works. It's always good when you're coding to test your methods and it looks like this does work. Now we get mark to Alice being printed out instead of the other way around. All right, so hopefully that is pretty simple and straightforward. So the next method that we have to tackle is the remove method, which is going to be a little bit more complicated. The beginning of it though is pretty simple because we need to go ahead and loop through the linked list starting at either the beginning or the end. It doesn't actually matter. I guess just to keep things simple, I'll start at the beginning. And it's gonna look like what we had for the method to print the linked list where we start a current node reference at the head. We keep going while current doesn't equal null. And at the end of the loop, we move on to the next node in the sequence by setting current equal to current next, just like that. 
inside of this loop body, what we're going to basically be doing is testing if this is the thing we want to remove or not, because basically we're passing in the value that we want to remove from the list and we're going to have to search for it. So the first thing we are going to do inside of the loop is check if this is the thing that we actually want to remove or not. So if we can say the node data equals the item that's passed in, that means this is the thing we actually want to go ahead and remove. So I'll put a comment in here and say remove current from list. This is the complicated part of the method. Hopefully the stuff we have so far makes sense. To remove an item, first you have to find that item. And that means you have to loop through the list, looking at each item in turn, which is what the code we have so far is doing. So let's look at the whiteboard now and talk about how we're going to manage that. Okay, so here's a picture of a doubly linked list. And just like we did before for adding to the beginning and the end, I think that it's best to start with sort of the common case first, which is that we want to remove a node somewhere in the middle of the list. The list doesn't have only one item. We're not removing the head of the list. We're not removing the tail of the list. We'll worry about handling the sort of most common case first, and then we'll worry about those sort of edge cases and see if we need to make any changes. So let's say we want to remove the one that's right dab in the middle, the 31 node. Then what's gonna happen is that current is going to be referring to 31. Now, unlike last time, we don't need to keep track of the previous node in a separate reference like we did for a singly linked list because now we have the previous links and we can get that easily. So what things need to happen in order to remove 31 from the list? Well, basically two links need to change, right? This link from 26, 26 is next, has to route around to 47 like this with this link bypassing 31 and going straight on to 47. And the other one, of course, is 47's previous link has to bypass around 31 and go back to 26. And that'll look like this. Then 31, we can just leave it here. It's fine that it's still linking back to 26 and, 31, and 47 rather, because when we return from this method and the current node goes away, then there will be no way to refer to 31 anymore, and the garbage collector will come around and delete it for us. So we don't have to get rid of any of these other links. So the code to do that then would be to say that it's going to look a little bit weird, but we're going to say current.prev.next because we're going to current, we're following this arrow, then we're following the prev link to get back here, and then we're setting the dot next link. So we're going to change this one right here and we're going to set it equal to current dot next. That makes the first change that we did where we fix this arrow from 26 to point to 47. So that's the first step. Then the second step is we have to do essentially sort of the inverse thing. We need to change current dot next dot prev, which is this link here. So we're going to set current dot next dot prev equal to current dot prev. And that is going to serve to change this link here from 47. It's going to point back to current dot prev, which is the 26. So that's how we're going to make those two changes. So let's go ahead and put those lines of code in. Okay, so we said current.prev.next is equal to just current.next. And again, I said this before, but you cannot come up with things like this without drawing the pictures because it almost seems very counterintuitive, I think, because it looks like saying current.prev.next like undoes itself. Like if you do like I plus plus minus minus, it would just like cancel out. But it doesn't actually because going dot prev and then to dot next basically lets us follow current dot prev to get to this node. And then when we say dot next, it doesn't take us back to 31 because it's on the left hand side of the equal sign. We're setting this link instead of just referring to it. And so it changes what current dot prev's next is pointing to. So again, 
it's maybe not super intuitive to just look at this line of code and see what it's doing. So you really have to kind of draw the pictures out. So again, like we had when we were adding the nodes to the beginning and the end, we're going to have to do a little bit of something special for some of our edge cases. So let's go and think about those now. All right, so let's look at one of our edge cases first. Let's look at the case when the thing we want to remove is actually the first node in the list. And current then is referencing the 18 node. Now, the problem with this is that when we get down to this line of code and try to set current.prev.next, we're going to have the null pointer exception because current.prev is null. So if we try to set current.prev.next, that will cause the null pointer exception on that line of code. So instead, what we want to do, if we are going to be removing this 18 node from the list, then what really has to happen is head is the thing that needs to change. Head needs to wrap around 18 and refer to the 26 instead. So what we can do to make that happen is edit this line of code to basically say something like this, like if there is a current.prev, so if there is a previous node, then set its next pointer like this. Else what we're going to do is set head equal to current next. That should go ahead and fix this problem because then what we're doing is we're making this change right here. We're setting head to current.next to pass the head pointer past the one that we're removing. So let's go ahead and add that to our code. So what we're going to say is if current dot prev doesn't equal null. If there is a previous node, then set its next pointer like this. Otherwise, there is no node previous to us, so we're removing the head node, and then the head node has to be redirected to refer to current.next instead. So that should fix that problem. We're going to, as you might imagine, have a synonymous problem on the other side of the linked list because if we try to remove the last node in the list then current.next.prev is going to give us the same problems. Okay so coming back here imagine that instead of removing the first node in the list we want to remove the last node in the list and that's what current is going to be referring to. Well then like I said doing current.next.prev is going to cause us the null pointer exception because if we do current dot next, that's a null pointer. And then if we try to access the dot prev of that, that's going to be the null pointer exception. So what we want to do is we want to do the same thing we did up here over down here as well. So instead of just setting current dot next dot prev, we need to first check if there is a current dot next. So if current dot next exists, if it's not null, then we do this code right here. Otherwise, what should we do? Well, just like before, if we remove this 58 from the list, then what happens is that tail has to be fixed because tail is referring to it right now. So we need to change tail to refer back to the 47 node. And so just like we set head equal to current.next here, in the else clause down here, first setting the current.prev length, we need to set tail equal to that. So we're going to set tail is equal to current.prev. And that should do it. So when we come back to the code over here, it's going to look like this. We're going to say, again, if current.next doesn't equal null, that means there is a node after us. So we're going to set its previous link to route around. So current.next dot prev is equal to current dot prev. Oops, I'm typing that out, but that's the line we already had. Otherwise, what we're going to do is we're going to set tail is equal to current dot prev like this to fix the tail link because we must have been removing the last node in the list. So hopefully that makes some sense. Let's go ahead and test it and make sure that that logic works. So if I open up the test method here, we should try a couple of different tests, of course. First, I'll try sort of the common case. Like I said, one in the middle. Let's remove Frank from the list and make sure that that works. So if we do our Java C, oops, I messed something up. 
in here, I said, oh, if I said if no dot data, I meant current dot data. Yeah, everyone makes typos, sorry about that. All right, then we'll go ahead and run it. And it looks like Frank isn't here. We go right from Gertrude to Edith. We're still printing backwards, which is okay. Now let's try one of the other cases, like when we remove the first item or the last item. Let's just go ahead and do them both. So we're gonna remove, instead of Frank, let's try removing Alice. And then let's also try to remove Mark. And so it should print Bob through Lewis if this thing is working now. So again, compile and run. And it looks like it's working. Again, it printed out backwards because we're calling our print backwards method, but it print Lewis through Bob. So we did remove the first and last items, which just had this sort of special case that we had to handle here for the first items of the list. Now, one thing that we will need to think about is the other sort of edge case that, that occurs to me, which is what if there's only one item in the list and that's the one that we're removing. Let's go ahead and test it first and see if it works. And then if it doesn't, then we're going to deal with it. So that would be like this. If we have Alice is the only thing in the list and we try to remove Alice and then print it backwards, what will happen? It should print nothing. Let's see if that actually works or not. So we compile it and then we run it and it does actually work. And it may not be entirely clear why that works. So let's go to the whiteboard and see. So this is what a link list looks like when it has only one item in it. The head and the tail refer to the same node. Its previous refers to null and its next refers to null. And so if we loop through and decide that this is the one we want to delete, then current is also going to be referencing this node. Then we do these lines of code down here that we came up with. And so we say, if there is a previous node, but there isn't, so we do the else clause here and set head equal to current.next. And current.next is null, but it's okay to reference current.next. We can't just, we just can't say current.next dot something else. That's when you get the null pointer exceptions. Just referring to current.next is perfectly fine. So we set head equal to whatever current.next is equal to, which is null. So this changes head to refer to null. Then we say, if there's a current.next, do this down here, but there is no current.next. Current.next is null. So then we do this line of code, which sets tail equal to current.prev. And current.prev is null. Again, it's okay to look at current.prev. We just can't do anything with it like current.prev.something else. So we set current, or rather we set tail equal to current.prev, which is equal to null. And so that gets rid of this link here. And so then we have this situation here where we've set head equal to null and we've set tail equal to null, which is actually what we need it to do to remove this node from the list. So we just have sort of like both of our edge cases are at play when we only have one node in the list. There's no previous node and there is also no next node and the workarounds actually work for this case as well. So this works perfectly fine. And I think this remove method is fine the way it is otherwise. So hopefully that makes sense. This remove method and the other methods that we talked about are posted on the notes page for this module. So you can download this doubly linked list and have all of the things that we've covered together in it. Now, the next thing I'll talk about is linked list versus arrays. So linked list and arrays both are sort of similar. You can use this double list and the dynamic list that we developed earlier in the semester that's based on an array. You can use them to do a lot of the same things. They both can store data. They dynamically grow and shrink. They can be used to loop through the data that's being stored. You can remove things. You can add things to the beginning or end. They do some of the same things. So it would make sense to compare them. So linked lists and arrays have different trade-offs, different advantages and disadvantages. Advantages of linked lists is that nodes can be inserted at any point more quickly. So you can insert to the beginning of a linked list, for instance, a lot faster than you can insert at the beginning of an array. Because to insert at the beginning of an array, you have to shift everything down like we talked about, whereas for a linked list, you don't. In an array, you also can't delete things from the middle or the beginning very quickly. 
whereas removing the first node in a linked list would be quite easy and quite fast, rather. Linked lists can also expand and shrink a little bit more easily because with an array, you have to allocate all of the memory at once. So you'd have to say, you know, if you have an array of size 100 and it runs out, you can't easily just add one more cell to the end of it. You would have to allocate a whole nother array, copy all of the data over in order to make one more cell. Whereas for a linked list, you can do that. You can just allocate one more node and then link it to the end of what you've already got. So they're a little bit more flexible in that way. But arrays have some major advantages as well. You know, just because we've been dealing with linked lists doesn't mean linked lists are like better. You know, if linked lists were sort of better across the board or even in most scenarios, then languages like Java would come with linked lists built in as opposed to being in the library, whereas they don't, they come with arrays built in. So arrays have a lot of serious advantages as well. And you'll probably use arrays more than linked lists in your career. But the advantages of arrays are that they can be indexed directly this is a really big one. If you have an array of size 1000 and you go right to the middle on 500, you can do that just instantly. We talked about the formula that can be used to compute the addresses of each individual cell in the array. That doesn't depend on how big the array is. You can jump right to the middle. Whereas if you have a link list that's size 1000 and you want to go to the 500th item, you have to loop through 500 items in the link list in order to get to the middle which takes a lot more time, of course. Arrays also take less space than a linked list, because if you think about it, for every item in the array, if you have an array of strings, you're only storing the string references. You know, they're back to back next to each other in memory, like we talked about. Whereas with the linked list, in addition to storing the string references, you have to store two node references for every item, if you're doing a doubly linked list anyway. So it takes more space to store all of those references in memory. And lastly, arrays can be looped through more quickly. We won't go into this in super a lot of detail, but in Computer Science 305 at UMW, you'll learn about caches and how the memory systems of computers works. But basically the long and short of it is that if you have all of your data stored contiguously in memory, like an array does, it's faster to loop through because it will fit into the computer's cache system more naturally. So that's some of the trade-offs. You know, if you're working on a program and you realize that you don't know ahead of time at all how, many, how much data you're going to have to store, and, but you know that you aren't going to have to jump through the middle of it very often, you're just going to deal with sort of the beginning of it, but you want to add and remove the, the beginning very, very fast, then a link list would be better. Whereas if you have a data and you know at least roughly how much there's going to be, but you want to be able to get to any item as quickly as possible, then using an array would be better. And so you just have to kind of think about what the trade-offs are in the program that you're writing to decide what data structure is going to be better. So that brings us to the end of our discussion of linked lists in this class. In the next few weeks, we're going to be talking about a couple of other data structures, such as stacks and queues that can be implemented with linked lists. So these ideas of the nodes and the next and the preve and stuff aren't going to be going away. We're going to still be using them as sort of the underlying like logic behind a couple of the other data structures that we're going to be talking about. But that's all for this time. So I'll see you next week. Thanks.